I'm Micah Smith, and in today's quick tip, we're going to look at the Simulate Keystrokes package. Now, the Simulate Keystrokes package actually only has a single action in it, and it is to simulate keystrokes. I want to show you exactly where I use this and where you might be able to use it within your bot builds. Now, the first example I want to show you is actually filling out a web form. So if we take this page, for example, if you want to follow along, this is automationanywhere.com slash automationanywherelabs slash intro dash to dash csv.html. Now, if I wanted to fill out this web form here, one way I could do it is to set up capture actions on every single one of these different fields to fill in data. That works fine. Uh, it takes a while for me to set it up though. Another option I would have is to use this simulate keystrokes command. So what I could do is with my recorder step, let's find that. I could find this particular window, click into the first field, and then use the simulate keystrokes command to navigate through the remainder of the fields. So let's see, it's this one right here. I'm gonna move this page over so we can see all of this and hit capture object. Okay, it's already got the focus right now uh, of this particular field, but I'm going to click here and we're going to use the action to actually click into this field. So I'll come down here for my action. I will set uh, left click and then hit save. Now, at this point, we should know that the context of the page is going to be that this cursor is highlighted right here in the vendor name. So if I'm just a regular user typing things out, I could actually start to type right here, right? And it would automatically fill in. Now, if I was going to fill this form, I would do it by filling in the data, hitting tab, typing in the next piece of data, hitting tab, filling in the next piece of data, hitting tab, right? Just like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the simulate keystrokes action do that exact same thing. So let's come here and for my window, we will select the previously used Automation Anywhere Labs. And then for my keystrokes, I'm going to type in vendor name goes here. And then if you see over here on the right hand side, I've got this little keyboard icon that says insert keystroke. I'm going to click on that and it brings up some keys that I can use to insert into my uh, keystroke command. So I'll hit tab. The next field I think was vendor ID. I'm gonna move this over here. Okay, vendor ID, then primary contact. We'll just do the first couple here. Uh, vendor ID, text goes here. And obviously I could also use um, variables with this. I just don't have any defined in this particular project right now. Uh, and then let's say contact name. I think that was the last one. And then I'll hit save. Now, if I run this, I should see that the bot will immediately click into that first field and then start to fill in data and tab through the remainder of the fields, just like if a human were typing this out. So it did its click and then it starts to fill in all that data and it goes really fast. It can tab through those really quickly. Couple points there, make sure that you're not going faster than the user interface of the application you're using is able to keep up with. So. If this were a web app that was doing some validation as I was you know, tabbing through different fields, I wanna make sure that I'm not entering data faster than the application is able to keep up with. The second use case for entering keystrokes is that I can actually use keystrokes to control an application. So I'm gonna disable these two and we'll use one more action here. So just like there's keyboard shortcuts for, you know, opening a window, saving a page, stuff like that. I can use those same kind of multi-touch keyboard shortcuts to make operations on an application. So let's take the example that we were just looking at, Automation Anywhere, uh, Lab, CSV, Google Chrome. For my keystrokes, in this case, I'm gonna use the insert keystroke. I'll click control and notice that it has a control down and a control up. So just like a human, I would press control I would press another key with it maybe, like let's say W, and then I would press let go of control, which would be the control up action. For Google Chrome, this actually allows you to, con to close a specific tab. So I'm gonna hit save here and run this. 
we should see that it sets the focus to that page, but then also closes it immediately. There we go. So you can use the simulate keystroke command not only to fill forms and to enter data, but you can also use it to use keyboard shortcuts for different applications to close tabs, save things, whatever you need to do for that application. Hopefully you found this quick tip helpful. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment on all of our social channels for more quick tips. Go be great.